We got lucky. Okay, yeah, I can see uh, you. Yeah, so uh, on the screen you can see that um, I attached the topology post-processing to the, to the assemblage. So mm -hmm. this is just the shortest path which you showed us. And um, so I'm really happy it worked and I finally managed to sort of get around it. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and now we want to uh, look into the criteria to select some of the components and generate this detail in it. So uh, my idea was to select maybe uh, like uh, based on the on the type of the connection, we can maybe select uh, like clusters which which have the same type of a connection or or the opposite and then and, uh, somehow select some um, uh, smaller clusters or, or make another selection of, of, of those to create these dense areas. And Alexander, I think, has another idea which he was emailing me, but uh, yeah, about subdividing these uh, square and triangular uh, elements into smaller ones, and maybe working on that, but I'm actually not that sure how that would work, so I'm also curious what Alexander will say. Yeah. So yeah, and I'm also, uh, as you as you mentioned, I want to grow also the other direction, so it's not that vertical as now, but I first want to establish this uh, this. Uh, uh, connection with uh, with the two uh, grasshopper files, and then we can work maybe on the. I can work maybe uh, then uh, enhance this macro structure later. So mm -hmm. that's for me. Okay. Yeah, and so I will share my screen. Um, so yeah, here you see uh, one. Um, yeah, one extract I, I did with the shortest pass on, the, on Jan's model here. Mm -hmm. And uh, so with my vector field and the shortest, the curve uh, from the shortest path uh, that um, define the orientation of my vectors here. Mm -hmm. um, and so this works pretty well. So here are some uh, pictures of, yeah. Some captures. Mm -hmm. I, I cannot make some uh, uh, Rhino renders because it doesn't work on my uh, geometry. I don't know why yet. But uh, yeah, well, these are some uh, some other uh, simple uh, renderings. And you mean uh, the the Rhino rendered preview is not working? Uh, not with my geometry. Actually, it does oh. something like this. So uh, it works with ah. uh, every other meshes, but not mine. Uh -oh. I've yeah. tried everything, like weld, unweld, go into another software oh. in order to uh, uh, fix the mesh if there were any problems uh, and put it back into Rhino, et cetera. Mm, but, uh, it might be just a matter of uh, purely that the fact that uh, it doesn't handle very well the, the entire resolution of it. There, yeah, a lot, there are a lot of meanders. Uh, I don't know. It could be uh, just an hypothesis. But anyway, the other images like these are very quick to make. It's like uh, one minute uh, to, to, to okay. do so. Okay. Um, so yeah, this is it. Now I want to um, uh, see with the high resolution geometry. Um, I gave up the idea of managing the densities with obstacles, etc. Just didn't work uh, really well, mm -hmm. and uh, my ID. Um, uh, so the mail I just sent to to Jan just before, the, so we didn't have the time to think about it. Was I think my geometry works better with uh, like long um, paths and not like small cells. Uh, I don't think it was uh, um, putting my uh, my pipes into just. Uh, some yeah, isolated uh, cells. But um, what could be done eventually would be to, um, if Jan can manage to have some extra dimensions into his structure. Uh, so like, uh, like we said this morning, 
we could maybe yeah. find some um, three-dimensional path uh, inside the, some maybe several shortest paths mm -hmm. in order to get uh, the three dimensions. And uh, maybe uh, select, for example, the, um, the cells that are close to the path. So for example, here we will select, uh, I don't know, these cells right here, for example, mm -hmm. and subdivide the, um, the curves in order to get gradually um, more density uh, when you get close to uh, to the path here. So mm -hmm. here it will be very light uh, like this. And then here you will see some maybe one extra bar and here some more extra bar. And here my big pipe uh, with very high density uh, pipe. This was just an idea like this, but we can do like uh, yeah, ah, two or three level of subdivisions. Nice, nice. So it would also like uh, uh, make the my structure denser. It would be like yeah. extra geometry to it, yeah. and maybe you look like a column or something. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's cool. I uh, I'm, I think that you have to to make a choice at this point because. Uh, uh, there, are, there are a lot of inter interesting strategies. Each of them would be okay per se. But the, since we have like just uh, barely one day to develop everything, you have one day to develop everything, uh, either you end up forming a sort of a catalog of options that are very, very shallowly explored, or you decide that to uh, go vertical more in deep with uh, with a with a single option or two option at, at best and start to make uh, test for alternatives uh, and refine the process by repeating the same strategy but uh, refining it refining it refining it you know try alternatives not because otherwise you end up uh, with something that okay we have so many options that we can make one uh, one try with the, the shortest path, one try with the other, and it will literally sound like a sort of a catalog of possibilities, but none of them uh, uh, reach the design exploration level. Do you know what I mean? Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, either uh, it doesn't matter which one, uh, uh, I think that the shortest path is the one is the strategy that has more uh, uh, capacity for you to build up and develop because it's already implemented uh, it's uh, fast uh, to, to put up uh, but then it allows you to make uh, a lot of tests relatively uh, speaking a lot of tests uh, but at least uh, make a sort of uh, short uh, uh, design exploration say okay Given the possibilities and the results, uh, we decide to go for uh, this kind of possibility with this strategy because we see this kind of uh, uh, aiming the strategy towards our, in, our intentions. Because otherwise, say, yeah, I can do this, I can do that, I can do this. Okay, what, what are you doing this for, right? Yeah. Well, all in all, I think, yeah, on, uh, you're on... Um, uh, on, a, on a pretty good uh, stage of development. The only thing I'm missing to see is uh, the scale of a human figure in there. <laughs> I haven't oh, seen that. I can yeah. share the screen, maybe. I have. A, yeah, yeah, yeah if you not, have one. It's not a render, but. It could um, be interesting to see the, the human figure compared to the resolution, the high resolution elements, but uh, well, I guess it's going to be a surprise for tomorrow morning. <laughs> Yeah, so basically uh, the, the elements are of the size of a person that can walk through. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, pretty yeah. pretty tight though as a space. Yeah, I can make it a bit higher. Too. Yeah, or can you just scale down the person, which is easier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah, for sake of... Uh, Saving time. I mean, the scale the scale is relative at this point. You're in the digital realm, uh, so yeah. instead of changing all the setting of the entire definition, just make the person smaller or bigger according to the proportion that you want to achieve. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's up to you guys to decide those proportions, but uh, make some tests to to see 
mm. how things look like uh, even with different uh, proportion of the person inside which okay. means relatively speaking a different relation between the the size of uh, a human being and the size of the space mm -hmm. yeah okay Thank you. right you're welcome you're welcome next up uh, can we go of course i mean okay Share it. I just uh, took a screenshots in different uh, levels that I uh, get and uh, um, Alberto is uh, working on the geometry to make it simple and uh, I'm working on the general idea and uh, it was the first uh, that uh, it was uh, around the curve and and it was so messy. Uh, but the lines, uh, I feel it, I felt this were better to work with. So um, the next idea the, we had was to have a bridge that goes um, um, along the geometry that and geometry is uh, around it. So that it's the person's view on the bridge. And the curve is not really refined. It's just the curve that you had uh, given us. And uh, uh, we had uh, some ideas that uh, all of the curves is uh, um, surrounded by the geometry, but uh, some part of it uh, just uh, be surrounded and uh, just uh, let the shadows uh, put on it and it's uh, still messy. So um, something like this, maybe. And uh, uh, so we decided to add uh, this pass uh, instead of uh, the whole uh, geometry and just uh, bold this pass for the uh, surrounding the bridge. Uh, it's not, and uh, I haven't had time to make the geometries seen in this. I just wanted to uh, know what do you think about this? Okay, first of all, uh, I would like to know what you think about this, honestly. Like totally honestly, 100% um, open and honestly. I, <laughs> I don't know, maybe 40%. <laughs> No, 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 be completely open and completely honest. Uh, like I think it could be uh, very good, but uh, in this short time, I don't really know what it can get, where it can get. Don't you feel like it's uh, a little bit uh, sort of an escape uh, from the topic that, uh, and from at some point the the, the task of a designer to take uh, really a lot more control in the system that he uses. Because I, I understand the time tightness. And um. if you want to go for this, it's not a big problem in this contest, context, it, but uh, um. let, me, let me explain. Mm -hmm. If you want to learn something from the use of this system, uh, if at some point you reverse the premise or you bend the premises so that uh, you end up fitting in a setup that allows you to do almost anything and anything is fine, then uh, you're making a, a step back in terms of design. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if the aim is, okay, we have to understand how to control, direct, uh, how order emerges from the rules that we use. And if you put this, all, all of these, uh, exploration path aside and say, okay, I am changing completely the premises. This is not anymore a space that I have to design, but it's an element that decorates something else that I have designed. And I am not even anymore responsible for a person going inside because then I observe it from the outside. Mm -hmm. So whatever I do, as long as it 
pleases me visually, it's going to be okay. I mean, you understand that this is what is uh, happening on the on the design side. It doesn't uh, really. It has uh, not, nothing. I don't have anything uh, uh, particularly against that, but uh, it's really steering uh, away, retreating away, more than steering away, retreating away. Uh, to say, okay, this is a lot easier than the other thing, so I'm doing this. And I tell you, in all honesty, as a teacher, not uh, I don't mean to be, you know, dismissive or anything. But uh, to, let's say, open up and lay it on the table what I think uh, un even unconsciously is happening here. So my suggestion, it's not an obligation. It, it, I mean, you, you all uh, uh, will get uh, the, the, the future certificates and everything doesn't matter, or whatever. But if you want to take away um, uh, hundred percent the learning experience from here you don't have to retreat when things get difficult I'm um, less concerned about uh, the quality of the result than with the uh, capacity of all of you to understand uh, the core topics that we are dealing with yes. you know what I mean Yes, yes. Um, the geometry was very messy and uh, mm. I uh, tried the vector field and because they had rotations in, uh, in them, uh, in the geometry, base geometries, uh, the fields were not uh, actually working so well with this. And uh, I didn't know any other uh, way to uh, mm -hmm. manage them other than the uh, curve and the scalar, scalar field. Yeah, uh, but how can uh, I, I mean, have... it's, uh, it's just uh, saying, OK, I cannot uh, make sense of this. So let's make this uh, sort of a nice object to decorate my table instead of a space that has a lot of constraints inside. Uh, but let's analyze the problem. Uh, because there are things that can work uh, up to a certain extent but they have limitation and it's more important for me that you understand why you encountered certain limitations and how to get out of them without uh, having to change uh, entirely the, 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 the problem that you're facing. Because if you change the premises of the problem, it's like changing the rule of the game while you're playing, right? It's not a fair game anymore. Uh, and you always win. <laughs> so that's that's the easy getaway, right? But the, the challenge is exactly uh, trying to understand why at a certain game you're not uh, uh, having the result that you're expecting. So let's examine this particular example. Like I was saying this morning to Alberto, uh, the risk it was in having so many directions. Mm. Because the... Uh, that's exactly what opens up uh, a lot of possible directionalities. But if you have too many and you mix them too many, uh, it's impossible to discern visually, perceptually, uh, any kind of uh, pattern from the global object. And the, he the has global... refined it a bit. Um, yeah, but the, showing... if you still, uh, but if you still have uh, these many. Um, I mean, you have to work with the right object and the right, uh, uh, if, if he has refined it, but he hasn't passed them to you yet, you're yes, not working hasn't. with the same. Yes. So you're not working with the same system as he is, but you should, because otherwise mm -hmm. uh, it's not, they are not, uh, you cannot separate things. I mean, you can work in parallel, but whenever somebody discovers something and says, okay, I found out this thing, you have to communicate immediately exchange uh, the results and maybe exchange data so that you're on the same page constantly. You cannot develop the field separately from the geometry of the components and then putting them together at the end because then if you're not working uh, with the component that Alberto is developing but with older version and Alberto doesn't know anything of the field that you're working, you are disconnecting and the result that you both get uh, do not get together at the end. You understand what I mean? Because it's uh, 
it's a continuous back and forth. This is a, a very tight process that uh, must be running its entirety all the time. Working split uh, in, uh, in pairs, uh, I know mm -hmm. has some drawbacks, but you have to make the most possible effort to try to work tight together and exchange uh, really quickly your results. Because otherwise, yeah, uh, the point is you're going into one direction according to one premise. It's a step-by-step -step thing, right? Imagine that you are walking side by side and then at some point you are not able to see what the other is doing anymore. You think you're going in the same direction and then when you're able to see him again after, I don't know, 100 steps, you find out that you've fallen so far apart from each other that it's... Uh, it's become really hard to communicate. So there should be uh, a constant update on uh, on both on both sides, because uh, yeah, otherwise the, you you end up so far apart. So the idea is okay. Let's see also what Alberto has done in terms of, of components. But yeah. in general, uh, Alberto, can you show your screen? Yeah, of course. Uh, now we are not uh, uh, it, Shermin must uh, stop the the stop. Yeah. I stop. Okay. okay. Well, we in, indeed we are still uh, sharing as far as, as we can <laughs> the, the information from each other, but uh, I, you, you know the, the, the workshop online is not a. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I mean, yeah. Don't take anything. <laughs> mean, guys, please don't take anything I say here as a critique to you personally. No, or... we know, we know. I don't think in any. <laughs> at any point and at any moment of this that none of you is uh, lazy or doesn't want to. <laughs> I understand the difficult. I just uh, try to pinpoint what the problem is from uh, the things that I see. Yeah, well, here uh, I reduce the, the uh, amount of uh, handles, trying to mm -hmm. be focused more in, the, in, in this idea that we, we discussed in the yeah. morning. And yeah. then as well, the heuristic uh, were reduced dramatically, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And over this, uh, well, I save a, a new heuristic as well from the, the, this, uh, this system. And the result uh, was uh, <laughs> incredibly, uh, in some point, uh, similar to what we want to work with this, uh, this system. It's not anymore something quite concentrated and it's trying to follow such a kind of uh, uh, no, huh. no, something like this. <laughs> no. huh. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So yes, I, sh that's I, sh where, I shared that's this where with, we uh, uh, got the bridge idea because yeah. it's really fits in it in this. Mm -hmm. But uh, and hear me out. Instead of uh, considering these things a sort of. Uh, structural ornamentation around uh, and then somebody looks at this from the outside consider that this can be the bridge itself made out of walkable spaces inside mm. Mm -hmm. so you consider things at an entirely different scale but you still are to navigate these things from within and not seeing it from without okay keep this constraint uh, in mind at least this one because then uh, then you can develop uh, all you want and i think uh, this uh, with a little bit of tweaking uh, and a little bit of work uh, environmental work uh, gives you a lot more discipline and a lot more control so you can make uh, the the thing about this is just as i said to the group before you must be able to work fast and to make a lot of uh, options uh, not options in terms of changing and changing uh, all the design uh, parts now the design parts are almost in place but see how many assemblages you have a field. OK, let's see what is the effect of the field on this one. So you have to try like five, 10 versions of a field to see what uh, works better. Maybe of those heuristics, uh, see that if there is some, some, some uh, rule that causes the system to, or what causes the system to saturate at some point. Uh, and instead of growing uh, the cluster, it looks for this sort of chain configuration. Mm -hmm. You should look at the occupancy of the components, for instance, mm -hmm. in the displays. If you display by occupancy, 
because now you're displaying by type. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you see, it, it, it saturates. So this, when it saturates this uh, quickly, that's why it's forming the chains, because then at some point, if you see the evolution of this, uh, you will see that it, uh, it saturates. So if, you, if you put it by sequence, I'm pretty sure the sequence is quite linear, probably. Oh, it's not uh, charging. Oh, there's something, uh, there's something wrong. Hmm? I don't know. Uh, well, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, go back to a coupon C or type, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that uh, probably somewhere, somehow, an extra handle might be needed. Yeah, because here uh, we, uh, we discussed with Jeremy to decrease the, the amount of handles. So we, uh, I, I, I cut from five to two or three, according to the component. And then uh, I think we, we, we must add an extra one. And with that, uh, we can have full control of the system. Mm -hmm. But that's exactly good. That's exactly what I was talking about. That's the scope of exploration. You reach a limit. You know that you reach the limit. And you understand why you reach that limit. You had too many before. Now you reach the point in which uh, the system tells you, OK, maybe one more wouldn't hurt. And right. is, I'm not sure, I have a question because I'm not sure if it's fair and enough to uh, go to the TXT file and then select which which. Uh, oh no no, that's what the TXT file is for. Mm -hmm. You can even manually manually erase it from the file if you say, okay, it's this one that I don't want, or it's this one that I want. Mm -hmm. Then you can compose your TXT file with the rules that you want. That's exactly why I made the load and save heuristics. Uh, Option. Okay, and, and another issue that I'm still wondering is uh, the order in which you pick the handles is the order mm -hmm. in which the, the code is following the, the instructions, yes? Not exactly. Uh, no, depends on the criteria that you're using. Uh, the, the sequence is this one. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, it selects uh, the, the component in the assemblage among the, those that are available. Mm -hmm. Once uh, it affects that component according to the uh, object type, mm -hmm. it tries to uh, it tries to align there all the possibilities given by the rule pertaining that type of component. So it selects all the rule that has that type of component as a receiver in your heuristics. Mm -hmm. Filters out uh, those that are related to occupied handles. So you're left with uh, all the possibilities in all the remaining free handles. And then uh, the, cri the criteria that you've chosen enters into the play, which is, if it's random, it's going to select one of, a random one of those remaining candidates. Otherwise, uh, if you have a field, uh, a scalar field is going to select the candidate whose centroid is closer to the threshold of the scalar field. If, the, if it's the criteria for the vector field, it's going to select the candidate, uh, which is the most parallel with the closest vector field uh, point. Okay. okay, so it's a selection by first by type, then all the rules with that object as a receiver, then uh, only those pertaining free handles. So there is not uh, a direct selection of the handles. Mm. Okay. Really if true. not, if you want to do that, you have to uh, selectively uh, use the rules. Okay. One yeah. uh, one trick uh, one trick that could, you could do mm -hmm. is that uh, using the random but repeating the same rule if you want to increase this probability to happen. Mm. If you make a, a heuristics that it's made out of two rules, but then you repeat one of them nine times and the other just one time. Then you have 90% the possibility to get the first rule and 10% the possibility to get the other. Okay. So you can uh, actually you know, steer the problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You basically cheat, but <laughs> that's <laughs> allowed cheating. You, you cheat destiny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and, and then. Okay. Uh, 
we, we, we well, these these modules are for, by for, by something. Yeah, so this is the the, the module in which we are working. If we we can we can easy to in, uh, increase the detail of this uh, match, and then it's going to respect the the handles everything, or is a little, is a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, come again. I'm not sure I understood the question. Right now, we are just working with uh, the, the most simple uh, meshes that we have. Yeah. Yes. But then, if I, if just an example, I, I want to increase a little bit more the detail of this piece. Just an mm -hmm. example, trying to uh, dig a hole in between, trying to create yeah. a, or, uh, such a kind of small bridge. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I need to change just the, the mesh, or I need, I need to change everything again. No, no. Uh draw a new one mm -hmm. that then you will orient in the place of the low resolution one oh, so, yeah. but, okay so these are like uh, empty packages okay. the important thing is that the new geometry that you draw fits inside the package Perfect. just uh, pay attention to do not uh, increase too much the level of the resolution but if you want to you know, highlight a direction with a sort of an inset or something, or uh, remove some faces to add voids and probably more connections. Yes, uh, you're, you're both very welcome to try that mm -hmm. and uh, see what happens uh, when you are in the assemblage and you navigate the space inside. I mean, this is right now, uh, it looks uh, full because you need the, the full occupancy of the space for that element. But how you decide to really manage the space that is inside, that's really up to you. Um, another question about the environment. Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, which scale uh, is better for us to work with? Um, uh, I said it's very, you... very big, actually. I'm not worried about uh, big or too big. So you don't have really, I mean, we are going uh, for, a, for a very speculative approach here, not really, uh, to, to see also what kind of spaces you are generating uh, if you, suppose that you didn't have any sort of constraint. For, for, all, I, uh, for all I know, or for all you know, you could be designing a space station. You could even not have the constraint of gravity. <laughs> you could be. Have you ever heard? Have you ever read the, the books uh, by uh, Yain and Banks, the culture series? No. I, I'm a big fan of Yain Banks. Uh, he wrote uh, the culture series is comprised of ten books, and it has a, an amazing. Uh, set of things. Uh, I'm just telling you that Elon Musk names uh, the, the raft and the rocket after the names of the spaceships inside Yain Banks books, for instance. Uh, but the, one of the interesting things is that he imagines orbitals. Orbitals are artificial planets, which are not really planets, but they are rings that are thousands and thousands and thousands of kilometers in diameter. There are ships as big as entire continents traveling through space. So imagine that you could even design something like this. I mean, if I had the computational power, size would not be a problem at all. But it's just because we, we're, we need to look at this with a sort of a set of fresh eyes and see, okay, Let's see what we can do with this. <laughs> yeah, that's really useful. You don't have a, you, you don't have a, I'm not putting you any worries because I want you to be uh, right uh, at the center of your exploration and also have a certain kind of fun with it. <laughs> at, yeah. at least if we don't do this now, then when? Yeah, that's true. Yes. Thank you. This week, you can add a, another week of workshop. Yeah. Um, I would love to. <laughs> or make guys. it 10 days. <laughs> yes, that would I be know, great. I would love to, guys, but uh, I mean, this, I mean, you're very, very free and welcome to go on with this as much as you want, uh, but 
uh, yeah, I unfortunately have uh, a fight set schedule in July. And it would be my pleasure, really, to to go on more. But yeah, I I couldn't do much more than uh, than these days. I wanted to keep it small because uh, I knew what my what my possibilities in terms of time and effort were. I want to make it more enjoyable as possible for you so that you have also a good learning experience. Okay, enough chit chat. Next group. We're tight. Come on. <laughs> um, we can go next or if somebody else doesn't want to. Yeah, hold on a second. I, I had a call at my door. Just uh, I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Next group, please. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. So uh, yeah. you hear me and you see my screen? Yes, I do. All right. <clears throat> yeah, me too. All right, um, so we uh, redefined our uh, modules a bit. I mean, I don't want to go back again uh, so far, but it's just a little bit. What we did was we, uh... okay, so we uh, created geometry, which we wanted to reorient based on the uh, developed uh, assemblage. And uh, that is what you see at the moment. We also redefined the bounding box. Mm -hmm. And the curve that goes uh, on the on the urban scale, uh, it's a bit tight at the moment, and uh, the the system processing is really limiting um, how fast it goes. It takes like around four to five minutes to put uh, 100 or 200 more units, so it's taking a bit of time. But yeah, we'll mm -hmm. get there. Um, yeah, so more or less, uh, as we discussed, this is kind of the scale that we are looking for. It's an apartment apartmental scale. I'll just make it bigger. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a residential apartmental scale. Um, yeah, so that is what I mean. We are still working uh, up until our meeting started. We still wanted to put more things on the top as we discussed, uh, redefine uh, certain parts such as the, <clears throat> for example, the uh, errors one can call them perhaps where uh, there is sudden these openings that are happening, we would like to close them. Or filter them Which out. I I can I see a fixed right in the window. I don't know if you are pointing somewhere in particular. Oh. Okay. Um it's funny. So uh I'll try to mark it on top of it. So uh, are you sharing the screen or just the uh, rhino grasshopper? I'm sharing the rhino screen in which a uh, grasshopper uh assemblage is loaded. Yeah, but can you try share just the, the general screen? Because if you change program or something, then I'm not able to see. Uh -huh. um, OK, I have to. It, I don't know if that's the the problem, but the thing is that I see the fixed screen with uh, uh, with Ryan okay. and uh, oh, All right, I got it. I have to share the screen. I get it. Yeah, screen, screen, not, not yeah, the same. Hey, OK, 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 now I see All right. it. All right. So, uh, OK, so basically you didn't get to see what I was trying to show. Um, okay, so this was the point at which we had to stop because uh, the system kind of gave up at one point. We still are processing it um, every few minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is the scale. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are certain junctions that we want to either make like a, um, a selective geometry that would come only when uh, one of the unit is vertical, for example. Sorry, for example, at this point, when um, it stays open, we would like to have like an optional geometry which would close it out when the element stays vertical or uh, redefine certain parts of it. Yeah, I mean, this is more or less what mm -hmm. we have at the moment. 
Okay, it would be nice to see a, a person in there. <laughs> oh, there is one. Uh, uh, is yeah, can, can you go in the perspective in the first uh, person view of uh, of that guy? I, I pulled out some images, but I would have to bake the geometry. So, one second. Um, okay. I'm really curious to to go in there. Oh, well, there are no staircases. You will have to climb a ladder or do something about it, unfortunately. Yeah, a lot of ladders. Yeah, no. <laughs> have you ever, guys, do you know that this uh, workshop that MVRDV did uh, some years ago or now, I think 20 years ago, which was called, it was called Skycar City. Yeah. It was the speculation of an urban uh, redesign uh, if anybody had flying vehicles. So you could park uh, your flying car at the 32nd floor of your building. No problem. Verticality would completely change uh, the meaning. Yeah. Yeah. From you so have I, anything I would from, make a lot of helipads in that case. I mean, there's going to be hell of a traffic, but. but. All right. <laughs> Do you have uh, any, um, any view from within? Um. Uh, close up. One sec. Um, Pause project. Or can you, can you just you uh, do, you, do, you have the, do you have the person uh, inside the model? Yeah. Just uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was Spider Man over there. Exactly. Choose Spider Man and make the zoom selected. Um, it's actually I just uh, um, ah, it's a reference to from it's, it's, okay, it's yeah, grasshopper, so I can't really uh, go to that. Okay. Yeah, pro tip, you can make uh, the person as um, custom geometry that you orient only when the plane is facing Z up, so you don't yeah. have Spider-Man. Yeah, no Spider-Man. Just, just normal man. It's not fun. Yeah, I know, I know, but then you, you should have to place the proper Spider-Man in the proper pose, not like a fake walking Spider-Man. Yeah. No, no, it's uh, it's okay, it's okay. It's just uh, a couple of uh, tips. I mean, the the intentions uh, and the way you want to work are all sounds all good to me. Uh, just uh, I I would keep the project uh, with the sort of this level of abstraction. So if you add extra geometry, don't try to make it maybe too detailed uh, or too constructive like don't don't draw spandrels don't draw nuts and bolts or something like that no. if you have like panels just panels or little more than that it, it's interesting if you can it would be interesting if you uh, actually analyze uh, your object and your assemblage and you can define a sort of an accent uh, so you change maybe the color of a face or mm -hmm. a certain detail that works uh, in the assemblage. So it works uh, when you connect the component one to another, and then you see a larger pattern that can emerge from that. Without overdoing it, just uh, find uh, a possible accent that then enhance the furthermore this thing. So a couple of, uh, couple of pointers uh, for, uh, for uh, reducing the working time uh, there. Apart from, uh, saving and loading uh, progressively, which I think you're already doing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, one thing uh, that uh, really slows it down is that uh, you are working with a global environment. Remember that you can move around the containment geometry with reset environment. So um, that instead of- uh, I'm sorry, working... I'm not quite sure what you mean. Oh, we are uh, not using uh, New York uh, when we are working. No, 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 not New York, not New York. Uh, I know, I know <laughs> that much. <laughs> I, I understood that. I hope because otherwise, you won't be showing me this. I guess. No. Um, yeah. No, I mean uh, the big B rep uh, bridge that you have yeah. uh, done. You're using that single thing as uh, an environment, right? Yeah. Um, oh, we because have. The system, you're right. You're right. You're right. We have this uh, bounding box, like this is what you mean, yes. right? Yeah, yes, this environment. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, okay. Mean, yeah. I mean, another one accidental encounter that we had was um, so uh, we did not, uh, I mean, as you can see already, the XYZ are like this, and the, the model mm -hmm. is uh, a bit diagonal. So that made perhaps also the, the, the whole thing process a bit, uh, bit slower because, like, all the units are mm -hmm. rotated a bit. 
along the uh, X, Y, Z. And yeah. that makes it uh, diagonal or at some angle to the... Because uh, actually what matters here is the placement of the first piece. Uh -huh. If the first piece is there, because then everything else attaches to it. So if you want a different orientation, uh, you just, uh, when uh, you can uh, change uh, slightly the orientation of the first piece. When you design the objects, uh, if we design the mesh of the objects, mm -hmm. remember that what you design uh, stays parallel to uh, how, how you design. Because I designed the thing parallel to the X, Y, and Z axis, so everything is parallel there. But if you slightly rotate that, the entire thing will rotate in that direction. Uh, one thing that I can suggest is to move everything so that your assemblage uh, is as close to the origin as possible. Otherwise, you might have a funny result. Uh, and it's gonna, because the, the, the farther you get from the origin, the more digits you have before the comma, then the less digits you have after the comma, you risk to lose precision. Maybe you have some mismatches in the collisions if you go on far enough. So since you can uh, move back and forth with the things in place, uh, either you move everything so that uh, your containment, your global containment geometry is more or less centered in the origin or uh, you, you mean the word origin of Rhino program? Or, yeah, the absolute origin of Rhino. Okay. The, the, point, is, the point is this. Uh, so suppose that you have uh, the maximum uh, amount, uh, the maximum number that you can express is this. Okay, if you stay close to the origin, your comma will be here, which means you have uh, all of this precision. Okay. The more you get far away from the origin, the more your comma moves uh, here or here or here, and then you're left. I mean, if you're very far from the origin, this is gonna be the amount of your coordinates, and then you're left with just this precision. This is why uh, staying close to the origin as much as possible matters in, in computers in general. When you work with a CAD, uh, at some point, uh, if you're working, especially if you work with an urban environment, uh, at some point, this kind of thing uh, starts to matter. Uh, can you switch on the B-Rep for a moment? OK, what I, OK, leave it like this. Uh, so what I meant? was that okay this is your general thing that you want to achieve but you can design uh, let's say a smaller b rep and use it as a containment environment so that the system grows there then uh, you can uh, use reset environment reset environment doesn't reset the assemblage okay so you can uh, move this. Let's say that you move this slightly in this direction, and then you reset the environment, and then you go on again. Uh, that's good to know. OK, so you can selectively let the, the algorithm work in a certain part. But my first environment has to be um, colliding with the, the, with the insertion point of my first component, right? Or is it? Uh, we, it should uh, at least collide with the. I mean, if that is, if this is, let's say, these pieces are your previous assemblies, okay? Let's say that you have a previous assemblies like this, very roughly sketched. Mm -hmm. You should design your new containment so that you intersect uh, enough of the old components All right. to attach to. It would be wise to switch on the the, visual, the visualization by availability, mm -hmm. so that uh, you take uh, as you take a, a fair amount of available components and not the saturated ones, so you know how much you you have to take of the previous assemblage into the new environment. Okay. Actually, I don't. Uh, this will probably help you a little bit focusing the zone of growth. Uh, uh, I am not entirely sure it's going to accelerate the process, 
because uh, yeah, that gave me an idea on how to improve the algorithm. But well, uh, okay, that's fine. Um, the last thing that I would say, yes, we are pretty much in a speculative stance, but if you give it a little bit of uh, credibility, Mm -hmm. It's not so bad. So yeah, I, don't, I have nothing wrong with something that uh, crosses the sky of Manhattan like this. But if it every now and then touches ground or touches the top of a building, it wouldn't hurt. Yes. You know? yeah. It wouldn't hurt. Yes. Just not like a huge cantilever that is <laughs> just uh, touching ground on one very like ballerina pointy... Yeah. Shoot. Yeah, right. you're right. Okay. Yes. Uh, you want to add something, Andrea? Uh, I just uh, have taken the suggestion of this morning to change the polyline inside the bounding box uh, to have a, a more diverse dispersion of the module. And actually, I let it run growing two steps uh, per second. Uh, in an hour, and I reach now the 4,073 units, and I stopped it. Wow. So actually, what I find out is if I use a, two, uh, a, a small number, but I let it go in true mode, it's, grow, it's growing quickly instead of uh, pressing sometimes with 500 elements. I don't mm. know why. But uh, like actually, it should be it should be the opposite. Uh, I mean, if you want to go really really fast uh, and reach really really fast uh, uh, a big number of uh, elements, the fastest way would be to disable all of the components after the engine. And because what kills it, it put a very very high number of iterations. But it depends because it depends on what you want to reach and let it go with through until it reaches the end because the, what takes a lot of time is the display and the more components you have the more time the display is called in if you make like two steps every update so it's going to do all the display procedure after the update the probably the best thing would be to Remember that uh, it starts with one component. So the count starts mm -hmm. always with one. Uh, the good thing would be to input the, the number of components you want minus one in the number of steps. Ah, and, and, and then uh, pressing step, because then it's going to do a, an entire loop. I, I haven't tried this yet. I'm just suggesting. So you might want to try it if it works first with a very small number of components <laughs> before doing this. But uh, trust me, the, the biggest holdup uh, is when uh, he has to call the, the entire display pipeline. And the more elements you have to display, the more it takes to, to display. Mm -hmm. So it, especially if you disable all the components after the engine, then you, you won't call any display at all. And then you can, when the algorithm finishes, you can just see what has happened. But uh, again, try this in steps from small numbers and then try to grow up. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Saruba, do you want to show also the path? Only the path? Oh, yeah, if possible. So that's kind of the path that we had at the moment. So it touches ground at both two ends, like a ballerina. Yes. And then uh, <laughs> it, it's pitched in the front part because like I realized kind of this is where the uh, more or less the uh, skyline is going up. So I wanted Share the to screen. It a bit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, God. Language, guys, language. Sorry. No, no problem. Careful, I said to share the screen. <laughs> All right. So um, it's pitched in at the at the center. That's where the kind of the uh, skyline of the city goes the, up. The inside oh, part. High rises. And uh, yeah, and then uh, as we discussed, I tried to twist the curve uh, right and left a bit. So, but 
yeah gives a good interesting character to it yeah no in the inside the path i meant uh, the the last upgrade we did to the script uh, the the how did you call it um, the walkways inside the elements is it possible uh, to see part. Do you need yes part? okay no uh is it visible uh, standalone or no oh yes okay this is what you mean yes the connection path you mean yeah mm, sorry yeah. No, then uh, we. I think uh, one of your requests was uh, for the final uh, outcome is also show off uh, a, this, uh, a path that uh, bears a, a certain meaning. It, it's not necessary people, but also other things. Uh, in, any, in our case, for sure, it's going to be pathway for people. But mm -hmm. uh, you, you want to see like a sort of a diagram uh, for the pathway, you mean? Uh, I mean, if uh, I would like to see some uh, post-processing strategy okay. and uh, to see exposed the, the way you, you, you do it in terms of information. So if you decide to act uh, to attach uh, extra geometry, I would like to see, okay, what information are you reading into the system to mm -hmm. decide uh, where to put it, for instance? Okay. So how you query the system, how this information is distributed in the assemblage. And then if you want to go to do something also with the path, that's fine. I mean, okay. if, uh, the, if this is supposed to be a housing, it would be interesting to see, okay, how do I go from house to house? Is there, is there a path in there that allows me to, you know, don't get out of my house and dive into the sky of Manhattan, but also, you know, ring the door of my neighbor and ask for uh, a glass of milk or something. Okay. If you, I... if you look at, yeah, if you have a, as a reference the, the Habitat 67, uh, there is a picture that is rarely shown because it's not as glamorous as the, as the, the other ones. But the, there is a, actually a very precise and uh, well thought path of uh, public uh, pathways that lead from house to house. So in your case, instead of, because in that case, uh, it has to be a sort of an external system around which the unit grow. In your case, it would be much better to have this sort of system embedded in your assemblage so that okay. some components change because they are involved in the shortest path, for instance. You know, you touch ground in a few places. Okay, let's make a shortest path from the two points that are touching ground. See what we get. Okay. But uh, that's, uh, I mean, doing the extra geometry thing would be already enough in your case. To see if you, if you want to do also this or, or not. Okay. Okay, no, that's uh, what I want to know. Thank you. All right, good. Okay, shall I show something? Mm hmm All right. Okay. Well, uh, I try to simplify my components. And uh, now it's uh, just the stairs and uh, just the one uh, part of the one crossing. And then, mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's like that, yeah. Um, I'm thinking about just uh, maybe the, some, the, some stairs in this, in this, uh, in this um, part can be, can be stairs, but sometimes it can be the walls, can be the, roof and uh, they combined with uh, with uh, another part yeah. mm -hmm. okay uh, all right uh, okay the um, 
I think that you can uh, actually try to make this work uh, if uh, at some point uh, you um, find a way of uh, using uh, the element of the stair when it's not in the stair configuration, but you consider it as something else. Okay, so you can uh, still draw your system like this. It would be interesting. Can you go inside and see, uh, like, put a person and uh, see what kind of proportion of spaces you are getting there? Yeah, of course. I can zoom in. Maybe you can do it. Have you considered the, the thing that I was uh, telling to consider the stair an extra geometry or? Uh, yeah, I'm considering about it, maybe. Because at this, mo at this point, you're always adding them and it's uh, really hard to form uh, uh, some larger space because there's at some point always the, the stair in between. Yeah. That would require, yeah, again, a little bit more. I guess you're still working with the random uh, aggregation, right? Yeah, yes, I am. Mm. Yeah, I see, I see. Because that's also another thing that uh, uh, really doesn't help. I mean, there are uh, the possibilities to create the larger spaces. I mean, if you look at the, this configuration right here, mm -hmm. you suppose that you can rotate it 90 degrees you can attach things, the same model can attach on the other side, uh, and you can have uh, uh, more, let's say, disciplined spaces. So um, it's hard uh, to tell at this point, uh, but I guess that uh, most of it comes right now if you're able to get out to just applying all the possible heuristics uh, all at once. Uh, I, I would advise that you really go for and try to use this uh, work in sequence, which is uh, you isolate a, a, a very specific set of rules, then uh, you start the assemblies by using those, then you save it, you load it as a previous assemblies, and you go on with another set of rules, uh, because that will help you to have a much more disciplined assemblies to start with. Otherwise, you have uh, you, you have all these stairs all over the place, which all in all, all in themselves, they look interesting because then you can transform uh, the element of a stair in the element of a screen. But the problem is not uh, this uh, multiplicity of function. That's actually a good quality. The problem is that due to the random nature of the rules that you're using, at the moment, you have a very poor degree of control on the spaces that you are creating. So the problem right now, let's focus on the thing. The problem is not the design of the component anymore. The component has the possibilities. Now you have to focus a lot on uh, trying to find the, the rule that allow you to uh, let's say, make a narrow down the things to something that uh, can produce a maybe more regular pattern, but also to open up a little bit the spaces that you are using. Because also look at look at here, right? If you think about uh, having this horizontal instead of vertical. That starts being walkable space. And then you can also have this kind of uh, step configuration from here to here. This is another configuration. So if this guy can attach directly to this guy, then you immediately start expanding the space. But that's a matter uh, just of the sequence of rules that you're using. If you leave it up to just the random uh, aggregator with all the possible rules, uh, it, you will never distill the um, more uh, disciplined possibilities that you have out of your component, okay? I mean, I like the, the, this plurivalence of the stair element. 
So instead of an additional geometry, I would use it as a quality element which is a, as an element which has, can have multiple functions. When it is in this configuration, it has a function. When it is in this configuration, it has a function. This configuration, another function. This configuration, another function again. And in some cases, it's also walkable. So occasionally, it becomes a stair, something that allows you to connect from one level to another. But you have to find a way to uh, put this uh, in line right now, things are uh, way too much all over the place, and it's uh, a lot of work uh, on uh, rules and sequences by using maybe the same rule ten times or just that one rule for I don't know a hundred uh, iterations and see what happens, or just two rules, just three rules, and see what they produce, and maybe try to apply them in a certain sequence or using a certain criteria, but uh, it's definitely, in your case, uh, uh, a lot of work uh, on uh, understanding rules and consequences and then apply them accordingly, not leaving everything up to the system in uh, random uh, selection mode, because otherwise, yeah, you get uh, pretty much the, the result of a patchwork. Okay. Okay, I'll try to look at that. Okay, is that, uh, that does, does it make sense? Yes, yes. Okay, I mean, uh, just leave the screen one second. Yeah. If these are to be stairs, then in my understanding, uh, a person should be more or less of this proportion in, in this place, right? Yes. Am I correct? Okay. Okay, so that we are on the same page, great. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, anyone uh, left? Or did we cover everybody? Can you hear me? Yes, I think Nora, ah, okay. because of the internet problem, I had to say something. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Um, I'm good, don't worry, it's fine. All right. I mean, my All computer right. crashed because I have to do other stuff for uni for, um, so it's parallel work. Oh, so. don't worry, don't worry. But I, yeah, I have to set up everything again, I think. But I think I'll just trial and error and, and Try to find out to be honest okay okay i just wanted okay. to show you something uh wait a second i'm just trying also to uh by the way to debug uh, the problem that you had uh, before so uh i found where the problem is but i don't know how to debug it i think the well, well, I see that as soon as I'm changing the starting point or reference point, then it doesn't work anymore. No, but I think there's something, uh, the problem is when he's calling uh, the rules. So I need to look into deep into this problem. Why is it? But I'm pretty sure yeah. it's in the, it, it has to do for me, it has to do with uh, how you created those handles and those missing rotations for all the for all the rest. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, wait. I probably got it. Let's see. Uh, I think it's uh, are the handles supposed to be of different type or not? Yes, there are two different types. Okay, there are two different types. But it's not working with, uh, or is this possible that? No, because I have done a lot of things with, well, okay, I'll uh, get to debug this uh, right away. Uh, but first of all, I wanted to show you the, um, 
talk about the deliverables and uh, show you the template uh, and the, the things that I wanted to talk about specifically. So, yeah, let me share my screen right now. One second. I need to find, yeah, this other thing. And I have to get also a couple of other objects. Yeah, I'm sorry, I need to prepare my screen first. Okay. All right. You should be able to see my screen in a moment. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Yep. All right, great. So what you're looking at is the template uh, for, uh, oh, wait a second, I need to change my headphones. Um, template for the uh, presentation. Okay. Okay. One second. I need to uh, get my things connected. Where the hell is? Okay. There you are. And uh, so this is a template in Google Slides, but it's um, you can download it as a PowerPoint, provided that uh, as much as possible you try to maintain the same fonts, or you can edit directly in. Uh, Google Slides, if you have a Google Drive, you can make a copy yourself. This doesn't count. Uh, all in all, yeah, we, I'm trying to retrieve the notes that I made to myself for the deliverables. It's going to take a while because the connection is really saturated at this point. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I'm sorry it's taking forever to upload a very, very simple page, and I don't know why. Yeah, and now it's just uh, changed the page for whatever reason to wherever you want. It. Okay. All right. So uh, here we go. The Template here is just a very simple template with uh, uh, very empty slides uh, and just a set of instructions. What I would like you to uh, do is a, a presentation that uh, has a, say, a minimum of uh, 10 to maximum 20 slides per group. And uh, Please use uh, all uh, images that uh, have a 16:9 proportion in full HD resolution, minimum full HD resolution. So apart from the presentation, if you have separate images, uh, please prepare a folder with all the separate images. So I will collect them uh, after the presentation. And also, uh, you will have to produce uh, each group uh, a 30 second uh, video. Uh, it can be an animation uh, of, of uh, Grasshopper, it can be a sequence of the assemblage, it can be whatever you want. Uh, but it has to be full HD, full uh, HD resolution. Uh, so again, uh, 1920 by 1080 in terms of pixel uh, resolution, 16 uh, to nine proportion again. So uh, what to put in the presentation? So uh, let's start from the, the cover. It's funny that I don't see the, oh, sorry. Uh, you, should, uh, you should enable the guides. So when you show the guides, uh, it will tell you a little bit more. So. This one is just a placeholder. It's not a cover for the whole workshop. But I would like you to put your own version, a version that reflects part of your project here. 
I I also share the um, a, a viewpoint, a view style, a display style in Rhino for which you can produce it, which is very easy. Uh, it's in the material that uh, I updated uh, right before this session. But it has to stay. You export it like just a transparent PNG. And you can copy paste it here, just as a cover image. Uh, then uh, the template is really, really very simple because uh, it has either a white uh, or a black page or the color that you want. Okay, you can customize your background color. Just don't overdo it. Don't put the uh, obnoxious uh, background. Don't put images in the background uh, or things like that. Keep it very minimal and very clean because I want the content to stand out. Uh, there are a few. Uh, template guides more than template instructions. So there is a guide to the textiles so that we keep and maintain a very tight graphic uh, as, a, as a workshop in its entirety. And a few things on uh, how to get the, the, the graphics. Uh, this one you can actually, basically you can ignore it. The important are things are uh, how to get the vector graphics uh, or to make the call out uh, on render so that uh, if you use a certain background, uh, make sure that you export images either with transparent background or with the same color so that they blend seamlessly. So I, I usually, for, uh, for simplicity, I tend to use directly the white background uh, in a lot of presentation because it's uh, super clean. You don't have to worry about many things. Uh, it, exports almost naturally from uh, from the Rhino render view. And so if you also have to, you know, do a sort of catalog and add data, you can add this data directly into the slide uh, over the picture. And the customization is just the project title and the name of the team members. And please, this is just a, a, a plea direct straight from my heart. Don't do any of this. Seriously, don't do any of this. This is the the don't slide. And I try to put together all the horrors that I've seen in my career of, as a teacher, graphically speaking. Particu a particular don't uh, is this one. So please do not ever put the pictures of your Grasshopper definition. I mean, it was hot for the first year or so after Grasshopper came out, but yeah, after that. No, no, please. Well, okay, enough uh, chit-chatting. More importantly, uh, there's also this document about the graphic references that speaks a little bit more about uh, what I would like to see in the presentation. Uh, as a general uh, uh, thing, uh, of course, what matters uh, uh, a lot to me is to expose uh, the both okay the geometric the architectural system but also what is the role of information in the system so for example when you do a catalog uh, of uh, the heuristics of your object uh, uh, you can even uh, try and extract it directly from the rhino view but make sure that uh, you make the rules readable. So you can adjust the te text size uh, and the grid size so that uh, as much as possible, it is still visually possible to relate uh, the visual result of the assemblage with uh, the corresponding rule. This is something that I showed uh, also during the examples on day one, uh, or there are other, the, it's uh, a good thing that you can uh, produce, let's say, this kind of relation between component design, catalog, and test as much as you can of what you've done. If you have saved uh, the assemblage that you did as a test, uh, the more of these things that you can sort out, uh, organize, uh, and put in the presentation, okay, okay, we run through this initial set of tests. This was our component. These were the possibilities of our components, and these are the tests that we came up with. Uh, other other ways of uh, visualize all these uh, all these things. 
and I also wanted to. Ah, okay. That's all right. All right. I see. Something else about the components. Uh, uh, trying to reach the highest possible uh, amount of components for your object and aggregation. And some uh, uh, examples of diagrams of post assemblage analysis and post assemblage interventions. So, uh, essentially, this is some sort of analysis of uh, uh, connectability of space uh, um, data related to space analytics, essentially. Or in this case, it's uh, just the analysis of uh, possible points uh, and spots in the assemblies where to add uh, extra elements, uh, in, in this case for structural stability. These are just uh, examples of uh, overlaying uh, data and information to geometry. This was done more for uh, yeah, no, exposing the data. In your case, it's not relevant, sorry. Because I, um, I got this document from a document that I prepare for my students, but of course, the breadth and scope of their project uh, was spending a lot more time than we have together. So uh, please disregard this last slide or use it as just a visual uh, inspiration, visual input, because I mean, we don't have time to be that specific and that precise in the details. Uh, I tried to explain this a little bit more uh, in these slides. Now I've, I'm going to put this also in uh, PDF format and add them to the to the folder. There are other examples that I showed uh, uh, on day one on uh, possible graphics that you can use to show all the heuristics and combination, the post assemblage analysis. Uh, yeah, one important, one very important thing that I almost forgot when you uh, visualize uh, these. Uh, or your aggregation test, please uh, report all the time the heuristics that you have used. If the heuristic is a very long list, if you use like 200 and something rules, uh, okay, don't put them in their entirety, but at least uh, report the fact that uh, this is the result of certain rules at play. And then, yeah, it's just uh, basically the idea of either trying to make a re as reasoned as possible, given, of course, the, the incredibly tight time catalog of uh, options that you went through. Of course, all of these results pertain to uh, works uh, and studios that had a lot more time than you than you had, guys. So they are just as a reference. Uh, it's not that I expect that you produce something exactly like this. But uh, it's the kind of uh, visual organization of elements, uh, the kind of elements that should be exposed in your uh, in your reasoning. Uh, so uh, disregard, uh, I mean, the level of the content, but uh, capture what is the idea of the kind of information that should be in the presentation, the point of view of your presentation. Okay, it's not just uh, yeah, we've been playing around with this new cool tool. No, we con we consider what you have done as uh, something that starts from elementary building blocks that has some level of embedded information and uh, growing up uh, in larger and larger assemblages, uh, they form themselves other structure of information and then being related to architecture, they create also architectural perceptual effects in terms of space, in terms of organization, in terms of visual uh, thing. So I'm not, uh, of course, against uh, also some good images, good renders for what you can produce. But yeah, just to give some idea of what it is from the outset and from the inside. Can so I make a quick comment? Yes, of, of sure. Uh, because those are all projects, images uh, from one year projects from the Bartlett and even the renderings and everything will take us a lot of time no, 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 for no. good visuals, graphics. No, 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 I, don't, I, don't, I'm, I don't I'm just, look, so I just look, have a I'm question, not, sorry, quickly, yeah. very quickly. 
So even for time wise, I think if we all do like if we all contribute fully the whole night, it won't be probably no, no, as no, no. Wait, wait, what wait, you wait, expect. Wait, 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 no, I mean, I, I cannot, I, I will probably disappoint you. Look, 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 look. No, so no, I you're not going to. that you know Can I, uh, let me, uh, uh, allow me to say something, like I said before. Yeah. I don't want you to achieve uh, this level of quality because I, I don't expect that in uh, one day and one night you can achieve this. I'm not showing you this because I want you, to, this is what I expect in, ter in terms of uh, quality level. But I expect that at least uh, you do a rhino screenshot with this perspective. And not just uh, look from the outside. Look, look what happened today. I mean, this morning uh, I asked uh, explicitly to everybody, please, can I see this afternoon at least uh, a screenshot of a point of view from the inside at eye level? I mean, I don't know if this is some sort of a psychological flip, but none of the groups showed me that. I had to ask again explicitly for it. I don't care if it's a render or a screenshot in a shaded mode, but I want to see and I want you to go inside and look at your project from the inside point of view. That's what I want. That's why I'm showing this image. Not because I expect that you do the render with this level of quality. What matters to me is from what point of view it is taken from. Okay, so the quality can be a lot rougher, but uh, I want you to capture, I'm not showing uh, this picture because I expect uh, an, an analysis that is this accurate, but I'm showing it because I want you to try and take also, not just the point of view of looking at the 3D object, but the point of view, okay, this geometry is in itself information, it contains information, and at least uh, at some point that should try to expose in some form that kind of information. But of course that doesn't, uh, that, uh, of, of course that has to cope with the time that you have at your disposal. I don't absolutely do not expect uh, this level of um, uh, of uh, graphic results aesthetically speaking okay but i i want to feed uh, something for your mind uh, to think about in terms of what you can do because uh, otherwise uh, the risk or the thing that i don't want is that all i'm having is uh, a set of uh, visuals from the outside of the object, and that's it. Which is cool, okay. Or visuals, and, and that's it. Again, it's not the, the, the quality of the things that uh, I don't expect to, to reach this level of quality in the presentation. I know it's uh, really, really tight, but at least uh, try to get in the back of your mind uh, what are the requests in terms of what you should try to expose of your project. And then do it in your own way for the time that you have with what you can, but try to share that time with this, this focus. Forget the, the, forget the, the graphic quality of, the, of these things. It's more what they represent with respect to the project that matters to me. Thank you, we will. Is that uh, clearer, better? Are you more calm now, <laughs> less worried about- No, I'm not calm. I'm just saying you that not <laughs> to you, for you to be to be disappointed because I know- I'm not disappointed, this don't worry. And from my I perspective, I, I can say I, as the workshops have been shifted two days, I have another deadline tomorrow um, as worry, well. So for me the priority is different but i can deliver everything like next week for that's totally fine but i'm i'm thinking <laughs> tomorrow it's might be tough no 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 i don't want uh, you to work extra week uh, it's just uh, i mean i would i would love to personally i don't mind working more yeah that's yeah i problem. mean and i appreciate if somebody takes the extra effort but uh I want to plant a seed in your mind more than uh, request something that uh, cannot be done 
cannot possibly be done in a, in a certain way. Because then tomorrow you're going to have to present your project. And more than the material is the way that you look at the material that you're going to present that will matter. Okay, but you're right. Maybe I didn't express this enough and the, the images themselves do not speak this way. That's also, that, that's also something that I, I understand and I admit. Um, but excuse I hope, me. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, was the dead, uh, deadline uh, at two tomorrow? Three. We presented three tomorrow. Three. Okay. Um, so yeah, I will not uh, take uh, any more time out of your uh, day right now, unless you have uh, more questions. And Ali, I'm still trying to debug the definition. There is something that, uh, that I need to look into deeper, but I will uh, put myself to it immediately. Thank you. Yeah. Because I, I am not understanding uh, exactly where the mistake is, and I need to retrace a lot of steps, uh, and I need to do it uh, right now. OK, yeah. I will let you know as soon as I have something. Thank you. OK. Uh, well, guys, uh, at this point, you know what? I don't think it's uh, necessary to have another review tomorrow morning at 9. Unless uh, there is uh, really something that uh, you want to review desperately. So let's make tomorrow morning uh, uh, a, volu uh, a volunteer kind of uh, review. So if you want to have a review on something and you want to ask me something, I'll be there. But I'm not forcing you to, to prepare something to see. I want you to focus on the presentation for tomorrow afternoon. OK? Good. Yes. All right. So yeah, uh, let's all go to work. I will go to work as well. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, yeah. Good effort, good work. Uh, keep it tight, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow. OK? okay. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, thanks. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye, guys. Bye-bye. I'll stop sharing those.